of the edential patients demanding for the implant prosthesis. I will talk about how to get approach or what is the treatment planning decision that you need to do. I will try to present some of the clinical steps with the trial and the errors and how we can achieve an acceptable result, good result, or are excellent results. This is most of the patient that we are faced. We have single missing anterior, multiple missing anterior, and also the posterior missings with single or multiple. And also we have a fully edential patients. The fully edential patient, this is the, our target for today, how to get approach or to make a diagnosis and the treatment planning for treating of them in a good way. We can't treat this edential patients by ambulance supported fixed prosthesis like this slides and also like this one, or we can treat them by implant assisting removal prosthesis by a locator or by a bar. In prosthetic dentistry, we are always deals with reconstructions of the aesthetics, phonetics, and functions, which requires a good foundation. After extractions of teeth, the residual alveolar ridge undergoes different types of remodeling. Edential patients using confessional removable prosthesis may suffer of the poor function and the lack of self-confidence. This type of the prosthesis doesn't fully satisfy these patients, and this makes the use of the dental implant as the standard of care for the treatment of the edential patient. As in all phases of dentistry, the diagnosis and the treatment planning are critical steps in obtaining predictable outcome. Treating the edential patients by implant presents a challenging situation which requires a careful diagnosis and a treatment planning. Before to go for the diagnosis and the treatment planning, we should to think about the limitations for the conventional prosthodontic treatment. Some they said for the cases that we cannot do implant placement, we can't get approach with them with a conventional prosthesis. There is some of the limitations like an anatomical limitations or anatomical factors. There is a biological factors, mechanical, and also the aesthetic factors. For the anatomical factors, if we can see in this patient's or the, this panoramic view, this patient with the severe resorptions, definitely he will not be or he will not satisfy with the removal prosthesis that you, you will give him. And also with the second one that the patient with the sharp residual ridge, Definitely, he will not accept or will not ac accommodate with the removal prosthesis that he will give. And also that the patient also with the a flabby ridge or that there is some of the soft tissues, but there is no bone foundation. Very difficult to accept the removal prosthesis. And also the patient with the higher renal attachment and also with the patient with the large tongue, that it will limit the neutral zones that you need for the complete dentures. And for the biological factors, any patients that with the parafunctional habits, definitely he will break this rainfall prosthesis. And also that the patients, they get the trauma from the prosthesis because he has a thin and fragile mucosa. And also for the mechanical factors, we have a lot of the mechanical factors that some of the remaining natural teeth, it's not adequate in size and numbers. And also they need a greater for the retentions and also there is a lack of support for the prosthesis. And from the aesthetic factors, some of the positions of the teeth that you will make in the available bone, it will not make like attractive appearance for the patients. And also sometimes the visibility of the clasps and also the facial support because that the patient, it looks like a, a pseudo class three or almost a class three. For the treatment of going approach for the edential patients, before to make a decision to treat this patient with a fixed or removal prosthesis, we should to go in a sequence 
of examination steps that we should to do, like extraoral examination, intraoral examination, and radiologic examination. And we should not promise that the patient for a fixed prosthesis until all the data should be collected. For the extraoral examination, we have to examine all of these points about the facial support, lip support, smile line, and lip length. What about the facial support? The patient existing danger give you a good rules or a good points about what the patient likes and dislikes. And you can examine the phonetics, functioning, and a lot of things for the, uh, from the patient with and without dentures. And if you can see here in this one, with and without denture, there is no huge difference. But for this one, when you will check that the patient with a denture and without denture, you can see that there is a huge difference. This point also, it will give you how you can get approach for this patient to make a decision for fixed or removal prosthesis. And also, if you can see this one, if you can see that one like that, that's one, when the patient he used the denture, he looks that the patient, he has a good bone foundations, but all the facial shape that he has, she has from the facial, uh, from the denture that she has. For that reason, we should to examine the patient with and without the denture to see which area that's or what I can make a decision for me. And for the lip support, and the alveolar ridge, also the alveolar ridge shapes or the, when the, the, the bone, it gets resorbed from the minima, uh, minimal to the moderate to the, the severe, you should to think, you will not only replace the anatomical crown, you should to think to replace the anatomical, anatomical crowns and also the missing gum and also the missing gum and also the supported bone structures. For that reason, we should to get to know where is the real positions of the previous crown that you will replace. For the smile line, sometimes when we have a patient with a good bone, a dental patient with a good structures of the bone and a huge amount of bone, we get happy. Really, we need to, uh, to, need to check that the patient uh, smiling without denture. If you will check this patient with this denture and you can see, you will not get happy because that the patient, if you will present uh, a fixed prosthesis for him in this situation, definitely he will not satisfy with these cases and it's happened with a lot of our cases because that the patient, when he will smile, he will expose or show that the non-harmonious uh, shapes of the crowns when the, that's area. For that reason, we should to do an alveoloplasty or to do whatever you want to do that to make or to get uh, a good result with the uh, facial uh, shape or at uh, smiling. With the lip length, most of time, we, look, uh, we like that the patient with a long uh, lip length because that the patient, when he will smile, he will not expose a lot of teeth, but the patient with the short lip length, most of time he will expose the teeth and also at this point we should to think about it. This is all the points about the extraoral oral examination. What about the intraoral oral examination? We should to examine the mucosal thickness and also the bone quality and the quantity. And the golden point is the interarch space. And also we should to think where is the incisal edge positions for the future teeth and what it was in uh, previous. Like all the edentulous patients, almost the interdental babilla, it's lost. And when it's lost, it's very difficult to regenerate it. And the most of the patient that should be told that your previous or that the teeth that you have with the shape of the gum or the shape of the interdental babilla, it's very difficult to regenerate it. And it's, we are trying to accommodate as much as we can. And also we should to think how it will get approached for that, the patient. Because when you will see this patient with the huge interoclusal space, very difficult to get and fix prosthesis. And look what is the wrong that is happening with these cases because that they did without uh, being porcelain and they end up by this and also it will end up by a lot of the mechanical and the biological uh, complications. And for the bone quality and the quantity, clinical examination or the visual examination, it will not give you an enough information about the uh, quality of the bone and the quantity of the bone. Uh, but we should to do CBCT, computer tomography, to examine that the bone and, the, and also the, the mineralizations of the bone available for that area. As we know from the LACOM and ZARB, the classifications for the bone quantity and the uh, quality, 
and most of time that we should to take care about the, the cases with the uh, not good bone or the uh, not good of the density. Because when we will have a patient like that, and the most of time we will find it in the posterior maxilla, we should to think about that there is a high failure about that or about in this area. But as ana clinicians, what we can do, this patient present with this type of the bone and all the, the areas, most of time it's have uh, this type of the bone. As a clinician, I should to think how I can reduce the force in my implant and my crowns in this area, on, on, on the implant in this area. The number of teeth that I will do, sometimes you will do an over engineering that you will replace each missing teeth. And sometimes you will connect your final prosthesis to accommodate what the patient bone quality and the quantity has in that area. You can see there is a huge difference between the type one and also the type two, three, and also the four. The third point, interarch space. The interarch space, this one is the a golden point that you should to think. Because when we will do our clinical examinations, it will not give you the real relation. It should taking impressions and do a mounting on the articulators and you can check that the patient or the interarch space that the patient. If you can compare between the first one and second one, the first one he has like an adequate or as acceptable interarch space. But this, this patient, he has a huge interarch space and very difficult to do an fixed prosthesis for them. And we are trying to do for all of our, our cases when we will examine the patient and we can examine the interarch space and also we can do a diagnostic wax up and we can see how it will be our future uh, prosthesis. And also we can do like interarch space and interarch space. That, that the patient, he has this implant in this area, and also he has a denture. We can do by a body, and we can see how is the interarch space, interarch space that we have for our future prosthesis. Sometimes, if you have a locator or you have bar, you should to know the interarch space that you have. You can do it by a, a by body, and also you can do it by a vacuum shield. The other things, the anteroposterior resorptions, if we will. Go to this, this uh, author, Wheeler, that he talked about that the dimensions of the central incisors about six to seven uh, millimeters. When it lost, the resorptions, it will go more uh, retreated positions. When we will go to placing our implant to do our implant, we should to know where it will be that our implant that it should be in this area or it should be in this area. For that reason, you should to use the accepted complete dentures for the patients and use a body to check the labial positions and you can see in that area. As the authors, what he said, if you have a dimensions more or exceed the 10 millimeters, definitely you would not do a fixed prosthesis for these patients. Like these cases, definitely you will go with a removable prosthesis because we will not only examine the interarch space, also we should to examine the anterior posteriors. And also we did for our cases, this patient, she has a complete dentures, acceptable, we did a duplications, and we are trying to see by the body, what is the anterior posterior resorption? And we try to measure the resorption before to make our planning. And this point guides us for the type of the maxillary arch. We have a square, we have a void, and also we have tapered. All of this type of the arch, it gives us that the planning where we can place our implants, the premaxillary area, it's need to the implant to do. Most of time with the ovoid arch shape, you should to place at least one implant. And with the tapered arch shape, you should to place two implants to accommodate the anterior cantilevering. And we did for the, our cases, like this case, the patient he present with almost a tapered arch form we placing our implant in the premaxilla to reduce the anterior posteriors. And for this case, that the patient almost, he has a square arch form, we placing our implant and we are not worried about the anterior posterior or the anti uh, uh, anterior canti uh, livery. And also with the advanced technology, you can use this uh, steps that you can do a virtual your bar futures and you can also do a scanning for the patient denture and you can see where it will be the anteroposteriors or the 
position that you need for the internal arch spaces and also the anteroposteriors. And also for this case that you can see there is a bar, there is a uh, abutments, and we can examine our uh, dentures. And after we will do the printing, we can try and also trial in this uh, body with the future procedures that we will do or the future denture. And we can see what we applied in the digital and what is applied in the uh, laboratories. For the fourth point about the incisal edge positions, definitely we should to examine that the patient with the incisal edge position, we should to the ask the patient to pronounce some of the sounds like S sound and F sound. We should to know the patient how it will pronounce with flanges and without flanges, and we can see how it will be our future uh, crowns. And also, we did with one of our cases that after we did a record book, we need to see that the shape of the teeth, we try to mark or to making some of the anatomy in the, uh, in the record books that the patient he has to see how it will be the shape of the teeth in future or to give us a guide which the type of the teeth that we can select. And also, we can examine the patient's his removal prosthesis with the flange and without the flange to see what that the patient when he smile because some of the patient when they smile and they has these flanges it will make them or to give them some of the difference for when they smile and also when they pronounce some of sounds. For the radiographic examinations, we should do the examine with a markers. There is no radiographic examination of the CBCT without the markers. And the most of the patient that when you send to them to the, do the CBCT, you should to have or to expect how it will be your future crowning. Like this case with a minimal bone resolution, there is a marker here, and there is, this is the bone av available. This, it will give us a guide that maybe the patient that we can treat them by a fixed prosthesis because the, our marker or the, our future crowning with the patient available bone, it's almost, it's accommodated to each other. That it will give us a guide that we can do fixed. But like this CBCT, if you can see this, this, uh, this marker and this bone available, definitely there is a huge discrepancy and no way to do a fixed prosthesis for these cases. And this is one of the, our cases. We spend a long time to see how it will be our future crown and how it will be the, the patient after you do the diagnostic works up and after we, we did the, uh, the temporary for that patient, we can see how it will be our future crowning because we are not caring about the bone available. If there is no bone, I will do bone augmentations, but we should to think how it will be our future crowning because we did in these markers and after that we placing our implant depend on the, our future crowning and how it will be. And with the prosthetically driven, I did some one of my case that I did like I need to see how it will be my future uh, crowns with a maximum intercuspations also. We did a casting for that one, and we can see the available bone. And as I said, we are not caring about the bone available. If there is no bone, we can go and, and uh, do a, a bone graftings. But really, our implant, it should be placed depend how it will be our future crown, and also it's guided by the crowns that are placed. Now we will go for the fabrication of the surgical guide. There is no excuse, I can't do a surgical guide. There is no excuse. We have a lot of techniques. We have a denture duplicator flask. This is it's not taking more than one hour. You can uh, duplicate the denture flask and you can do it in a very fast, in let, not less than hours. If you don't have denture duplicator flask, you can do by a body and uh, orthorhesins and a little bit, a little bit of vaselines, and you can do your surgical guide in less than one hour. And also, we can use that the alma gauge. This alma gauge that it give us a relation about the vertical and the horizontal of the patient existing dentures. Some of the patients that when they have a denture for a long time, they will not that they accept any relation that or any changes in relation that it will happen. For that reason, we can use the alma gauge that it will give us the anteroposterior and the, the vertical uh, height of the prosthesis and you can copy in our uh, final prosthesis or in our uh, guide that we, we will do. And with the digital technology, we can do by uh, simplant or by any uh, guidance, uh, guidance uh, uh, company 
that they will fabricate a guys depend on that the planning that you are do and also you can do sober impositions in your diagnostic wax up or in your the danger that the patient he has and you can do your planning and also you can check the vital structures like inferior alveolar nerves and also the nasal palatine and you can fabricate or distribute your your uh, implants and you can see how it will be your future surgical guide and after that you can print your uh, surgical guides we have a uh, different techniques from the simple to the most advanced technology and as i said there is no excuse to do your implant or to place an implant without a uh, surgical guidance now let us come for the prosthetic clinical steps what is the prosthetic clinical steps i tried to collect some of the hot points or some of the clinical steps that most of time we are facing with the cases that they treat by the implant prosthesis, especially for the edential patients. I collected about eight points. The first point, the accuracy of the impression technique. We should to splint or non splint our, uh, our impression or the, our impression coping for the full arch prosthesis. The second one, we should to do engaged and non engaged abutments. The third one, how I can do, how to check the my framework fit. And also, for the posterior area, I should to place two or three implants for the posterior missings. And also, I should to splint or non splint my final crowns or the my final prosthesis. And I need to replace the second molar or not. And also, the short dental arch for the implant prosthesis, it's, it's applicable for implant, but also what we know that it's applicable for the natural teeth. It's applicable also for the implant prosthesis and the cement and the screw retained and the cantilevers for the full arch prosthesis. I will try to talk about each of these steps or each of these uh, clinical points with the some cases that I had or the treated with a follow up. The first things about the splinting and non splinting. Like these cases, this you will take your open tray impression without splinting. And also this one that you will take the impression with the splinting. You have a choice to use this one or to use this one. What the literature said about this one? There is a one, a famous study about, uh, published in 2008 that they did a systematic review. They compare about the seven, uh, 17 studies. They found that about the splinting and non-splinting. In these 17 studies about splinting and non-splinting, they found that se seven cases that advocate the splinting techniques, three not advocate to use, uh, to splint the impressions, and seven they know reported there is no difference for splinting or the non-splinting. And there is other study published in 2011, they show that the effect of the splinting and non-splinting for the edential patients, and they have like a 13 cast. The 13 cast, they use, they use it for the splinting and they use it for non-splinting. For the splinting, they found about 12 of the present accurate fit. And for the non-splint, only six of the 13 show the accurate clinical fits. And this, maybe it will give us a guidance that we should to do splinting for the impression uh, coping that we should to take. It's not easy, but it's not, uh, it's not an, a difficult to, uh, to do it. But most of the time, when we will do it direct in the patient, it will be at time consuming. For that reason, you should to take like an, a normal impressions, send them to the lab, ask the laboratory to join again the impression coping by a duralay or by a composite and return back again to you and taking the other impression again. Like this one, this patient, after I placed the implant for the maxilla and the mandible, after the second stage that the patient came to me I took the first impression because now I have two choices for splinting. I can do splinting directly in the patients, but it's a time consuming. Or I can taking the first final impression, sending to the laboratory and retain back again, do a joining by uh, Duralay in the laboratory and taking the other impressions. And also we use a paper clip for joining or taking the impression and the, in the undercuts. There is no, sometimes you have said that I have a shortage in my clinic. You can use what you have, like this a paper clips. It's available most of times. You can put your paper clips and you can do uh, connections and taking the final impressions. 
Look for this case. This patient came to us, edentulous. He is demanding to, for a fixed prosthesis or fixed implant prosthesis. We didn't promise that the patient for, all, for the fixed prosthesis until all the collecting data. We did amounting uh, cost and we did uh, a diagnostic wax up. And after that, we give that a chance that we can do an implant fix for him. We're placing upper eight implants and lower uh, six implant for a future of the fixed prosthesis. And in the time of the impressions, we use the same technique. We're connecting the impression coping, but uh, not connected by the dural aid, sending to the laboratory and retain and the laboratory making the connections, the dural aid for the impression coping, retain back again, but in the patient mouth and also the impression taking for this one. And this is the time for the final prosthesis. If you can see, this case, when we inserted our uh, metal triangle, we fit and we can see that the prosthesis, it was in a passive fit. There is no difficulty when we send this one because we're spending a time for taking the impression to have a good fit about this one. And we use that the patient provisional that he has, uh, the index to give us how we can do our final prosthesis because this is the thickness of the porcelain. We need to mimic what the patient he has in his provisional because he spent a long time in that one. And this is the final occlusal view. And after we placing the uh, composite to close that one. And this is the frontal view. And this is when the patient, he get the smile. And we should to fabricate any fixed full mouth cases or uh, like a natural teeth or the implant supported, we should to fabricate uh, a flat appliance or the night guard for that patients. And also we should to show the patients how he can do his hygiene. Like here, this is the, in the maintenance visit, really to have a good uh, prognosis for the cases, really you should to show the patient how he can clean and how he can get approach for the removing all the collecting uh, foods and also the black. This is any cases that you, you will go or to, to go with the chance of the fixed prosthesis, really you should to give the patient a good maintenance uh, visit to have a good uh, results. Look for this second case. This patient, he is edential, upper maxillary edentulous and lower posterior edentulous. He is demanding for fix. We're collecting all data. We did a mounting uh, cast and we did our CBCT and the, our diagnostic wax up. And we can see that the patient, we can go for him as a fixed implant prosthesis. After the implant is placed for this patient, we came again and we put the abutment for him and we did a temporary for him. And this is the patient that he has a provisional. We should that the patient use it for a long time, about four to six months that you can see how the patient he accepted. Because sometimes the patient come with high point in this area, we can do grinding. And some point in this area, we do grinding. We should to accept what the patient he accommodate in this vertical relations. But when we will go and that the patient now he is accepted in this relations, we need to transfer in our final. How we can transfer this one? The impression is taken for this one. We put the impression coping. But if you can see here, this the impression is taken for this patient that the dural is connected by the dental floss in the clinical. It's a time consuming and the patient really, he will feel tired. And the upper impression taken in one visit and the second impression taken in other visit for the lower arch because it's very difficult to, or the patient, he can't accommodate the long time that to do the connections. This is our final cast. And now we need the relations what the patient he has in his uh, mouth. What we did? depend on the relation in the left side, we put the record block in this area. Now we have this relation depend in this one. And we did the alternative one. We have this relation here and we put the record block. And now we have this relation to what his, the patient has in his mouth. And we use this relation to fabricate our final prosthesis. And to be sure about this relation, we did other diagnostic uh, wax up to see how it will be. And this one, we use it for the future of the metal dysprosthesis and the thickness of the porcelain because we use a mimic of the diagnostic wax up and also the provisional that the patient he has in his mouth. And this is the abutment, use the positioning jig or the transfer jig. It helped to transfer the abutments in the same relation with the found in the cast to the patient mouth. And this is the maxillary abutments and this is the maxillary prosthesis and this is the 
frontal and the lateral view for this case. And this is the final uh, panoramic view. And also, again, we should to enforce about the flat appliance or the night guard. And also, we should to think about how the patient he can do uh, maintenance or he can do a clinic for this, for this case. What is the good for this patient? That the patient we almost finished in 2009. And the patient now he came in 2019, about 10 years follow up because that the patient he used the flat appliance and also he get a chance or he is easy for going all the maintenance or the cleaning. If you can see, the ambulance is in a good situation. But if we can compare here the bone available in this area and also the bone here, really the bone it's resolved for the natural teeth and really that the patient he maintain a good hygiene for that the ambulance and the resorption it happened here, this is the age of the teeth that it will happen but really that the patient he maintained and we have almost about 10 years with this uh, case. This is other case that the patient like he has this relation in a mounting cast and the diagnostic works up it done and the planning it was done for this patient that to do the uh, implant supported fixed prosthesis. And after that the implant is placed, we came back and we took the final impression with this Duralay, we did it as a direct and that the patient, he has a provisional for some of times. And now we need to see how it will be our final procedures because now that the patient, he has a provisional, we select the final abutment and we saw that the relation here. Now we need to see how is the relation. We need to see how it will be our thickness for the metal that we will do and how it will be the thickness of the, our final uh, 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 and thickness. For that reason, we try to do the Duralay, this one, try in the patient mouth, took the relation, sent to this one to the laboratory, because this one that I needed to see that the thickness of the metal, because I'm not only concerning about the thickness of the porcelain, I need also to know the thickness of the metal that I, 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 will, I will do. And we have a good result about this one, the frontal view, and this is the patient when he, she is smiling. What about to use the dye stone or the, to do the stone for the connections? As we know that we used uh, Duralay, we use a composite and sometimes we use acrylic. What if you will use a dye stone? There is a one paper in 2013, they use this uh, dye stone as a verification jig. We use it for the, our cases, like this one. We have these patients, after we collecting all the data that we're replacing the implant, we place our six implants and lower six implant for a fixed prosthesis. And in the time of the impression, the impression taken for these patients, and we send it to the laboratory, and we ask the lab to do the connection, not by the Duralay, to do by the stone. Because the stone now, it will be like a fragile. Any crack that it will happen, it will show us that our impression, it was not accurate. And it's happened with this case. If you can see, there is a crack here, and also there is a crack here. That's mean our impression is not good. But what we can do now? We can connect this crack by the uh, Duralay or the bicomposite and taking the impression or the big up impression, sending it to the laboratory to fabricate. And what we did, we did a connection by the Duralay and we took that the impression and we sent back to the laboratory that to do the new cast depend on the relation that we have. This is now the real relation what the patient he has. And this is the occlusal view for the impressions. And this is the final prosthesis or the final uh, metal sober structures. Really, we have a good fit for that one. It was very uh, easy or the symbol to fit and to do the screwing. And this is the body used for the patient uh, provisional that he has to show us our uh, thickness of the porcelain that we will place. And this is the fitting. If you can see, because we're spending a long time, if you can see, there is a nice fit about the, our final prosthesis because we are not taking the impression at a one time only. We took the impression, send them to the laboratory, do whatever to, to do to have a nice results. Look for this case. That the impression, it, uh, the implant is placed for this patient, depending on the, all the guidance that we are talking for the diagnosis. And after the implant, it healed, the impression is taken without any connections and the abutment fabricated and final procedures inserted 
and the patient, he end up by a good result. What does that mean? That means that the connection and we are using our time, we, we didn't need to do or to, this technique, it's not or the consuming time. Any cases that you will do, a screw retained prosthesis, definitely you need to uh, do connections. With the cases with the symmetry retained, any misfit that will happen with you, you can do by uh, some of the adjustment for the abutment or the fitting surface for the crowns. Like this case, it's done by the symmetry retained. Any, the, uh, any misfit that will happen, you can adjust it by the uh, grinding from the inside of the porcelain or from the abutments. But for the screw retained prosthesis, definitely you need to do a connection or a splinting of your impression coping. Now let us go for the second point about the engaged and non-engaged abutments. What does that mean engaged and non-engaged abutments? For the fixed partial dentures, if you will do an engagement or the hex shape of the abutment, definitely you will not have a good uh, fit of, of, the, of your prosthesis. But if you will do a non-engaging, you will have a good fitting of your prosthesis. What is the engaged? Engage, engaging abutments that the hex shape of the abutment and the non-engaged non abutment that almost the round, there is no interference that you can fit prosthesis. We can use it for a fixed partial denture and that's when we can use it for the single crown. Single crowns coming to you from the laboratory with an non-engaging abutments and you did insertions, really you are the guilty for this one because all the forces that it will go for the screw. Because for that reason, we should to have an unengaging abutments like an anti-rotations and distributed the forces directly to the implant fixtures, not to the screw. Like this case, we have a single crown. We did an engaging abutments. Like for when we have a fixed partial denture, we did an unengaging abutments. But what I need to, to say, that the non-engaging abutments, like this case, that a full case, that I did a non-engaging abutment and also non-engaging abutment. Do you think this is like the right choice to do any fixed partial denture, three units or the four units of non-engaging abutments? Really that the patient, he will come again with the screw loosening and also with the uh, complications. Why? Because that's the forces also it will concentrate it into the uh, screw. For that reason, what they create, they create the hemi-engaging abutments for the fixed partial tensions. What that mean? That mean one abutment is engaged and the other abutments, it's non-engaged. So this hemi-engaging abutment, really it's a beneficial that you can accommodate the benefits of the engaging and also the benefit of the non-engaging. And also this one, they recommend that you use for the cases that less than five uh, units. Because if you will have a cross arch, no need to do an engaging, the distribution, the forces it will be uh, distributed over each other. What about the third point for the framework fit? How I can do uh, examination for the fitting of my prosthesis? As all of, or as all of us we know, that the user can, that he mentioned some of the points for the, uh, checking the fitting of the, uh, our prosthesis. If you can fit your metal sober structures or your final, and you can do one screw and you can see how is the fitting of this uh, prosthesis. This is the paper for the Joseph can, but he mentioned the one screw test and also he mentioned there is a sum of the steps points that you should do about the uh, alternative finger pressures, about the direct visions and tactile sensations. And also you should to do radiograph and also you should to do the screw resistance. It's not recommend only to do a one test. The screw test or the one screw test is not uh, only a one recommended point. And if you can see in the articles by Joseph Kahn, what he concluded that the combination of the methods that you should to do to achieve an objective result. And later, there is a one study also as a critical review what they conclude, they conclude also what he said about the use of cans that also it's useful to combine the several techniques. I will not only use a one technique to check my fitting of the prosthesis, you can do by the one screw, by the radiograph, tactile sensation, a one screw or the resistance, you can do a combinations of the points to achieve a good results. What about to do a two or the three implant for the posterior missings? This is the options for the replacing of the posterior missings. We have, 
or we can do to replace each missing, and we can do two implants with the fixed partial dentures, and you can taking or replacing two implants with mesial cantilever, or two implants with distant cant cantilever, or to do a combination, and this is the and this is the last or the least options. This is an options, but we are trying to avoid as much as we can. But if you will do your implant and the patient he end up by a failure of the implant and uh, you taking or you make a bone, uh, bone augmentation in this area and also it gets failed, maybe you can go for this uh, choice, but most of time try to avoid this choice. What we have the cases for the replacing two or three, like this one, we have this patient with a fixed partial tension and they have also one patient with replacing H missing, and they have all of these cases with a good follow-up, and all of this patient, they get a good results. What the Eliasson that he said about his uh, study, that he did a comparison about two years uh, uh, study up for, uh, by the Eliasson that uh, to, to comparing between the two and the three implant, what they found, they found that there is no difference about 96 and 97 uh, persons between the two or the three implant that you are replaced. There is no a difference. But there is some of the factor really we should to think that to do a fixed partial denture or to replace each missing, there is some point I need to mention about that when I can do with this one. Let's now go for the splint or non splint pilot prosthesis. Like this a choice, single crown separate, or to do a connection with this one and this one. When I can go with this a choice and when I can go with this a choice. Like this patient, we have this patient with, uh, with eight years. We replace each missing uh, uh, tooth in this area. And our final prosthesis, we did a connections. And we have this patient for eight years. Look how this patient, he is a bar functioning. And when we will do an ambulance, almost a non-ideal implant, almost like a short ambulance, we think about how we will distribute the force in this area. For that reason, we did a connections we did a splinting prosthesis and we end up by a final or the a nice uh, results. Now when we need to go or to do a splinting for our implant or to replace a, a missing implant, if we have a poor bone quality or the area is augmented, really you need to replace each missing or to connect or splint your final prosthesis. If you have a non-ideal implant like a short implant or reduce a diameter implant, definitely you need to uh, connect or to, uh, to splint your final prosthesis. And also the patient with the bar functioning habit, really you need to uh, do a connection for the final prosthesis. And what they mentioned, and I think it's not right that it's easily handling for the dentist because there is no proximal contact. It, I think it's an easy for the clinician that he will do or the technician that he will do, but for the dentist to do, it's not uh, an accurate to that, the academic, but it's the first one, second one, and third one, most of time that it will go us or shape us at the patient when we can go for the splinting or non-splinting. What about the replacing the second molar? We need to replace the second molar. I will give you a scenario of one of my cases that has happened with me, that the patients we replace after the implant is placed, we replace with a good crown or the shape or the large crown, the patient, he ended up by a shaping of the crown. He came back again to us, we did a narrow crown, and also he ended up by a mechanical complications, and we end up by the sleep implants. We need to replace the second molar or not? I think not all that the patient that you should to replace the second molar. Some patient we can replace, but some of the patient really, we don't need to replace all uh, uh, missing second molars. And the Karmish, he mentioned in his uh, chapter 16, and he give you about 18 reasons that you will not, you need to replace an each missing uh, second molar. What about the short dental arch for the implant prosthesis? As we know, the short dental arch for the implant prosthesis or the short dental arch for the natural teeth, we can do it for the uh, implants. What it's, what I found in the literature, there is one uh, paper or there is one uh, 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 published article that about a case report they, they did a short dental arch. And we used the Kaiser uh, study that we can it's, if, uh, apply it for the natural teeth. I think it will be applied for the, the implants. We use as one of our cases, we placing a fourth implants with 
uh, a short dental arch, and we end up by a follow up for about two years with this patient, and really he's uh, doing well. And what is the Kaiser that with the patient with the short dental arch, he has about uh, 50 to the 80 percent of the showing uh, efficiency. And almost as I, I asked that the patient how to maintain the hygiene, how and how to get a clean for that area to have an excellent or a good uh, prognosis. What, are, what about the cement and the screw retained prosthesis? For the cement and the screw, uh, for the cement and the screw retained prosthesis, this is the your choice. With the cement retained prosthesis, what the literature said, you can't control the excess cement. How I can control the excess cement? Because sometimes your finish line it comes subjectively. Why is the I should to be afraid about the cement. I'm not afraid brought, uh, from the cement itself. I'm afraid from the irregularities of that cement that it will accumulate the black or anything, it will harm that gum. But the cement itself, it's not harming to the gum. But this, uh, this, the gum in that area, that it will collect the black and you will end up by uh, pre-implantitis. And like this study by Wilson that he said about it, 81% of that, the cases that he did the follow-up, he found that the patient with pre-implantitis, and when he did a follow-up, that he found, or to do the maintenance for this area to remove the excess cement, seven or four, uh, 74 percent of these cases, it get uh, a good result. How we can prevent uh, the excess cement? We have a lot of techniques. We can do venting of the crowns, retraction core, duplicated abutments, and the cotton applicators. There are all of these, uh, this one and this one and this, all it will be difficult to do, but the duplicated abutment, it should to do for all of your cases. We are trying to do a duplication for the final abutment for that the patient before to do the insertions for the crowns for all of our cement retained cases. And if you can see in this one, we did this one with the acrylic, this one with the Duralay, and this one with the body, and this one with the abutment like what the patient he will use. And really, this is a good point to do study which is the uh, thickness of the cement that you will end up by if you will use the acrylic and you will use the uh, Duralay and you will use the uh, impression materials or the uh, body. And what I found in the literature is that they have in one case, they did a venting that to control that the excess cement. But this point in this area, it will end up by a crack of the uh, porcelain. What about the screw retained? We are, most of times, the screw retained prosthesis is our first choice. But you, you know, there is some of the drawback about this screw retained prosthesis. Look for this molar. What the literature they said, the screw retained, it's occupied about 50% of the occlusal table and about 75% for the occlusal table for the uh, premolars. And really, this occlusal tables, it will interfere with the functioning and most of time you will end up by uh, shaping. For that reasons that the screw retained, we like to do the screw retains, but also there is some of the drawback about the screw retained. And also for that, the cases with the aesthetics that the implant if less in not good positions, you will end up by a labial position of the screw retains. How we can solve the problem of the screw retained prosthesis? We can solve the problem of the screw retained prosthesis like what the Wadwani mentions. Wadwani mentioned that you can do like an inlay or like of as an casted uh, final uh, prosthesis, you can do it and you can insert in this area instead of you to do a composite uh, restorations. And really this one, it will be the same material of the final prosthesis and really it will not interfere or the patient, he will not end up by any uh, shaping or any things for that area. What about the points of the cantilever for the full arch prosthesis? The cantilevering for the full arch prosthesis, it was the first choice with the, or the first option with the uh, Brina Mark when he is starting to replacing the uh, mandibular uh, cases, that he will do a fixed prosthesis with a distal cantilever. But what he did in his prosthesis, he did like uh, how to uh, do a retrieval. And what they recommending, in the last uh, European Association of Asian Integrations about to do the cantilevering, they said there is no enough study about the cantilevering for the full arch. And also what they recommend, 
that maybe you can do it, but there is uh, some of the cautions that we should to take and also we inform the patients. I will show you some of the case that it's come to us. This patient, he came to, to us in the clinic and they re replacing and uh, he has this implant and he, they promised to do a fixed prosthesis for him. This is the occlusal view for the upper and lower. We took the impressions, we did the connections direct in the patient mouth, and we did a relation record block, and we did a diagnostic wax up. And what we now are trying, this patient is promised by a fixed prosthesis, but now we know that our final prosthesis, maybe it will end up by a lot of mechanical complications because this patient, he has a cantilever in this area and also a cantilever in this area. What we did, we did like a telescopic procedures for the upper and sopra structures for the lower. If you can see, this is the telescopic for the upper and this is the multi-unit abutments and this is the jaw relation done with this patient using what the patient he has from his uh, provisionals. And this is the body index from the, the labial for the thickness of the porcelains. And this is our final prosthesis. We did like an atelescopic with our cement and lower with the sober structures. What we did the sober structures, because it will be like a separate crowns. Any complications it will happen, we can changing the crowns alone. But if there is any cracking for this one, it, uh, it will be a change because we expected for that cases that we end up by uh, some of the complications. This is after the insertions of the maxillary prosthesis. And this is after the insertions of the sober structures and the crown on that. If you can see that the sober structures and this is the final crowns and any complication that it will happen for this crown, we will change it alone, no need to do or to remove the final uh, or to the, remove the, all the sober structures. And this is the frontal view and the right and left and how the patient is smiling. And this is the uh, panoramic view for this uh, cantilevering. Uh, it's, it's a choice but you can do it with the, some of the questions that maybe you will end up by some of the uh, complications. Now, let us come for this case. This patient with edentulas, we try to use the advanced technology to blessing that the implant or to take a benefit from the advanced technology. This patient, we fabricate the graphic stint for him and we saw how the uh, bone available, we did our planning and we did a printing for the patient surgical guides. The simplest what they have a benefit about that, that you can fabricate your final cast before to placing the, the implant in the patient mouth. What we did, this is the analog. It's connected to the impression coping from, to the surgical guide. We did a boxing and we did our final cast before to taking or to placing the implant in the patient mouth. And we did a mounting depending that the patient denture, this is the interocclusal space that we have from the right and left. We select our abutments and we did a vacuum to fabricate our uh, temporary prosthesis. Why we did this one? Because we have a plan to do an immediate loading for these patients. In the day of surgery, we use the same one that the guide, the implant is placed in the patient mouth. And if you can see, this is the cast fabricated before that the implant placed and how it will, it will be when they placed and if you can see how is the comparing. We did a benefit or to took the benefit from that guide, we fabricate our final cast and after that we placing the implants and we did our a temporary for that immediate placement and this is the patient how he is smiling. What about the cases with the huge interocclusal space? Like this one, this patient with a huge interocclusal space we did a record the block and we fabricate the guides. And if you can see from our marker that the patient, he has a huge discrepancy between the bone available and the future crowns. We did a planning for this patient had to do upper and lower implant assisting removal prosthesis. We did our uh, maxillary and uh, mandibular implant prosthesis. This is with the healing and this is with the locator after it's connected. This one and this one after the healing, after the locator that to place in the that patient. And this is the frontal view of the final prosthesis. And this is the occlusal view for the maxillary and for the mandibular. Mandibular, we did it without a metal reinforce. We need to do a metal reinforce of nut 
I think there is some of the factors that you can do. For the maxillary, it's a must to do. But for the mandible, there is a sum of, they, they, they said you can do, and some they said you can do. Also, we have some of our cases, this is the frontal view. We have one cases also we did, a maxillary and the mandibular also metal reinforcing. As I said, the metal reinforcing for the maxillary, it's a must if you will do a roughless or the uh, U-shape. And for the mandible, it's a your choice, or you can see what the patient uh, occlusal forces to do the fix or uh, to do the uh, metal reinforce or not. What if the patient came to you with the implants, it's placed in a not a good positions or a mal positions of the implant. And the patient that they promised that they do an uh, uh, that's uh, implant assisting uh, rainfall prosthesis. What you can solve this problem? Like this one, we're trying to do casting uh, bars and the locators. Also, if you will do that, the casting bars as a one piece, definitely also it will not fit. Because if you can see that the implants, it came in this area and the implants it came, no way to fit also the bars. What we did, we did with this patient like a two pieces of the locators. If you can see, like a key and key way, it's a two pieces of the bar with the locators. And we end up by a good result with this patient. This is the maxillary after the implant placement, and this is the maxillary, uh, the, the maxillary panoramic view of the locator or the bar with locators. And the patient, he functioning well with this patient. You know, this patient, I inserted for this patient in 2012. And we have the patient until now. And he came to us, we changed his uh, final uh, prosthesis or the maxillary with some of the arts that the patient, he asked that to do it with some of the arts. We did a gold mesh, and also we did as like, like a transparent or by the uh, ortho resins. And we call this one like an art and science of the maxillary over tissues. One point about to do your big up, it should be like a direct or it should be like an indirect. What is your choice? Most of time we will put our uh, white block and also we will make the big up and you can take his impression in, uh, to take it in the, in, in the clinic in the same times. But most of times that the patient if you will deal with the handicapped patients or the patients not controlling the forces, it's not easy to do the direct relations. You should to taking the impression like this one and send to the laboratory, put the locators in the cast or the replica and taking out the fabricated in the final or the final prosthesis in the laboratory. But what is the disadvantage for the indirect? that shrinkage, it will happen, the polymerization shrinkage, your prosthesis, it will not fit. You can do this a choice and you can do it in this a choice. This a choice is more accurate and this a choice is not accurate, but you can use it for the, the cases with uh, not uh, controlled forces. And also with that, the cases that you didn't need to spend a long time with them. And also to protect that the acrylic for the direct to not go for the undercuts, Sometimes we are not only using the white block, and also we use a piece uh, of the rubber dam that to prevent some of the acrylic that to go entrapped inside. Because if it's entrapped inside, and if you will come to re uh, remove your prosthesis after the pick up, no way to remove, uh, to remove it. And you will end up by the cutting of your uh, denture or the uh, uh, mandibular dentures. And this is the difference of the retention means for the, from the, angulation about 10, uh, 0 to 10 uh, degree and about uh, 10 to uh, 20 degree and what's when that you can select. And the final things that I need to talk about it. If I have a bar, I need to do a flat appliance for the bar, really you need to do. Look for this one. That, that the patient, he has a bar here. We did a flat appliance because that the patient, this, his upper bar, when he, he is sleeping and removing his, uh, the prosthesis because he has implant assisting prosthesis, this metal, it's making uh, shipping or the fractures for the mandibular prosthesis. For that reason, any removable or the, any attachment he has a patient, really you need to do the uh, flat appliance or the 
uh, or the uh, night guards. Thank you. Thank you, doctor, for your wonderful and informative lecture. We really enjoyed it. Our dear audience, I would like to mention as the attendance of the scientific webinar activity presented by the Saudi Cross Studentic Society has exceeded over 15,000 people in the past days. It has been decided to add an additional daily prizes for those who wins in the daily competition. In addition to a free membership, the winner will receive a voucher of 1,500 riyals provided by Amasit Tamayi's company. The award will be provided until April 19th. Please, doctor, if you can kindly stop sharing your screen so you can read the participant questions. But please, doctor, before answering the question, press on answer live so everyone can see the question. Okay. Here we have a question for splinting which material you prepared. Most of the time we use the Aduralay because it's easily to handling. We use a composite for some of cases. We end up by a not mi uh, misfit because I think the composite he has a high uh, polymerization uh, shrinkage. We have also here one question. What you will do if the splint from the lab is not fit? Uh, I will cut and I will join again uh, in the patient mouth. I will cut the uh, Duralay, placing in the patient mouth, joining again by the Duralay and taking the other uh, impression. Sorry, doctor, for interrupt. Can you just stop, please, sharing your screen so that Dr. Alanud can put the question of the day? Thank you. Okay. What is the stop share? Okay, great, Doctor. I did it for you. You can continue with the questions. Yes. It's done? Yeah, yeah, it's done. Okay. Do you think the splinting, um, uh, the impression coming in the lab will be accurate splinting directly to the patient's mouth? I think if we will bring it from the laboratory and try it in the patient's mouth, if it's not fit, you should to, uh, cut it. And also when you will do in the patient's mouth, uh, also you should to cut and also rejoining again before, uh, because there is some of the polymerization shrinkage for this, for that one. How to decide the fixed uh, bridge will be a one piece or a section end. Our, what I talk about that to do, uh, to replace each missing uh, teeth with implant, to do your crowns is splinting or not, there is some of the factors that the bone quality for these patients and also that the patient, he, uh, he, he managed with the non-standard implant like short or uh, a narrow diameter implants and also that the area it's an, uh, augmented. This is, it will give us a guide that we can uh, uh, conducting or splinting our final prosthesis. In case of the three unit bridge retained by the implant, do we need a verification jig? Any cases that you need to do it if you have uh, angulated abutments and you need to uh, transfer this relation to the patient mouth, really you have to have the positioning jig or the uh, verification jig. What is the venting from the crown? This is an old technique. They have the crown, they do some of the hole from the occlusal or from the lingual, and when you will insert your cement retained the crowns, this excess material, it will go out. And definitely that it will end up by a lot of complications like uh, some of the shipping for the porcelain. Why we, why we place four implants in the maxilla for the over -dentures? 
you can do two implants for the overtensions, but your final prosthesis, it will be a full coverage. We will placing a four implants for the overtension for the maxilla to do like an a U-shaped or the horse shape or the roofless prosthesis. If you will need to placing only two implants for the maxilla, you will not do a roofless prosthesis. You should to cover all areas. Why you did replace the second molar in case of the removal case? That the case that it's re replacing by the second molars, that we end up by a lot of the complications. For that reasons, I'm not recommend to replace the second molar for not all the cases, for some of the cases, because if the patient he is a bar functioning, definitely he will come to you with a lot of the complications. What is the time needed for the flat appliance? The time needed for the flat appliance, I think the recommendation to use for the all life. If the patient, he has a maxillary and the mandibular implant prosthesis for fixed, and really he can't co control his uh, occlusal forces, really he needs a flat appliance for all of his life. Which information should we provide to get the duralay that shaped like a teeth? And which step should we ask for it? This is a nice question. That's because most of time we are concerning about the thickness of the porcelain. We are not caring about the thickness of the, of the metal or the sober structure that we need. We need to know how is the, that the thickness of the metal that we need, that the patient, uh, that's the clinician when he will, he has this uh, abutments, he can fabricate this one instead of to do by wax, he can do it by uh, a duralay. And you, you can bring it to, the, to you in the clinic, insert it in the patient mouth, and see how is the relation. And if you have this body index from the diagnostic wax up of the provisional, you can see the, 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 the thickness. Now I have the thickness of the metal by the duralay, and I have, I have the thickness by the uh, abati for the porcelain that I need to place. We have an impression that accurate since we don't have to verification check. As I said, if you will do a symmetry retained prosthesis, if you have any misfit, that you can do some of the adjustment and you can do a fit in a good uh, way. What is the difference between the sober structure case in the mandible and the hybrid dentures? Hybrid dentures, it's the acrylic over the metal sober structures. And that, that the sober structures, it's an, a pink porcelain with the shaving of the prepared teeth with the separate crowns. Because with, for that case, we, we have uh, a long uh, canti, cantilever. For that reason, we are trying to do like uh, sober structures with the separate crowns. Any complication that will happen, we can change it. What is the prognosis for the implant cantilever cases? Until now, what they recommend or what they said in the literature review, there is no enough cases or there is no enough case series about it to say that it's a good treatment or not. Only some of the cases that they has. And also when you will do for the patient, you should to do or to inform the patient about it that maybe some of the mechanical and the biological complications it will happen to you. Sorry to interrupt, doctor, but if you can answer the last two questions, because we are short in time. Okay. What are the indications for the dye stone splint? This dye stone splint we, knew, uh, we use for this patient as a, a verification. What they recommend in that paper, that if any crack that it happened, that's been your impression it was not good, or it was not inaccurate. And also it happened with our case. When we place this verification jig for that one, there is some of the crack happening for that patient. For that reason, we did a joining again by uh, Duralay and we took our impressions. Does the occlusal night guard 
is recommended for the over general cases as what I said for that the patient with bar or with any attachment because that the patient sometimes he has an a bar opposing bar when then the patient at night maybe he will obey metal to metal for that reason I recommend to do a flat appliance for this also metal sober structures the flat appliance is not only for the teeth or for the porcelain prosthesis and also for the metal sober structures placing in the patient mouth, really also you need to do a night guard or the flat appliance. This is a good question. If you have an eight implant in an, an upper, you prefer to have a segmental prosthesis or a one piece. What the Stanford in 2005 and in 2007 he said, he said to should to do an upper eight implants in the central canine, first premolar and first molar, and to do a segmental prosthesis. Why to do for and when you will do the follow-up for that the patient, when you will go and do the follow-up or the any complication that it will happen, you will remove only the separate fixed partial dentures. But if you have a patient with a bar of functioning or not good quality of the bone, definitely you will go to do as a one piece prosthesis. About to this, to do, if you have eight implant to do a separate or to do as a one uh, piece prosthesis, depend on that situation of the case or the situation of the patients. Again, thank you, doctor, for today's wonderful presentation. Dear participants, you. you can answer today's question on Twitter to get the chance of winning the, uh, the prizes mentioned before. Have a good evening. I hope you all stay safe. See you tomorrow at the same time, inshallah. Thank you, doctor.